You can't walk into a store right now and pick up any GPU you want these days. Sure, there's Radeons, but good luck finding an NVIDIA GPU that's just sitting there waiting for you to buy. So how do you play? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can still get your game fix in with the power of an RTX 3080 and game at 4K HDR. I would love to introduce to you the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro 4K. It's a device you can buy right now for anywhere between $150 and $200, depending on what sales are going on at the time. Even though the NVIDIA Shield is definitely cheap as an alternative to a $3,000 system, is it truly worth it? Let's find out right now. Now, what is the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro and what can you actually do with it? Well, for starters, it's very similar to like an Amazon Fire TV Cube or a Fire Stick, Roku devices, and say an Apple TV. It's powered by Android TV with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa built in. You have many of the preloaded apps like Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, Google Play, Movies, and TV, plus more. You can download games from Google Play and play them directly on your Shield TV. You only have 16 gigabytes of storage, so you can't go nuts with installing apps, but you can download quite a few before you actually run out of storage. Now, before we get to the bread and butter of the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro, let's look at the device itself. It's a streaming device that's very small, very light, and about the size of a DVD or a Nintendo Switch game case you can buy at the store. It's actually pretty small, but it does pack a bunch of power. Now sticking to the outside of the Shield TV Pro, it's got four ports on it, two USB 3 Type A ports, which yes, it has native support for keyboard and mouse, which is tremendous if you're a keyboard and mouse player on PC. It also has an HDMI 2.0 port and a gigabit ethernet port for your wired connection. And that's it, simple on the outside in terms of features. On the inside, it's equipped with Nvidia's Tegra X1 processor with a 256 core GPU and three gigabytes of RAM. Now, when you look at the specs, it may be hard to differentiate them from say like a PC, but if you wanna know more about the processor and the Shield, check out the link in the description below. Now, Shield also supports 4K Dolby Vision with 4K HDR video playback at 60 frames per second. It also comes equipped with Dolby Atmos Audio, which is awesome. Some other features are its 802.11 AC wireless internet with Bluetooth 5.0, and it's also supported by Android 9 powered by Android TV with a Google Chromecast 4K built in. That's actually pretty cool. This means you can connect devices like Bluetooth keyboards and mice, Xbox controllers, and PlayStation controllers. Nvidia also sells their own Shield controller if you wanna be all in on Nvidia. Now there's quite a bit inside of this little device and if you wanna check out all of the rest of the specs, check down in the description below. Now I should mention as a side note that the Shield TV Pro comes with the device itself a remote for it and a power cord. There is no HDMI cable in the box. You have to use your own. All right, Roby, so it's like a streaming device that sells for like up to $200. Why would I be $200 for something that I can buy like a Fire Stick for $29.99 at on like Amazon or Best Buy? Well, let's get to the bread and butter of the Shield TV Pro and what you can actually do with it. You can sign up for a monthly subscription to NVIDIA's GeForce Now membership that comes in three different tiers, which we have listed down in the description below, but we're also gonna walk through right here. This membership gives you access to free games and more to play right on your TV without the need of either a console or a PC. You're essentially renting a virtual PC or a virtual GPU and playing off Nvidia servers with the different tiers of memberships. Let's break down each of the tiers, shall we? The first tier is free. That's right, it's free. But it does come at a price, not, not a monetary price, but the price is like, yes, sir. the first tier is called, funny enough, the free tier, and it gets you the following. You get a basic rig, which means you get no RTX and gaming, is around 720p, or maybe the equivalent of like a 1060, if we had to guess. And there isn't a lot of information on like essentially what the basic rig is from a PC spec perspective. Standard access, you get to the gaming service, which means you wait in a queue for your turn to play the game you want, and when it's your turn, you have a limited amount of time. And that's where we get to like the last feature of the free membership. You get one hour session link. That's right, you only get an hour to play the game. And if you were like playing like a Cyberpunk 2077, you know you could spend about 20 to 25 minutes alone just to create your character the way you want before you actually get any gameplay in. But Roby, what happens when my one hour runs out? Do I lose access to all my game progression? Do I have to wait? Well, we'll get into that a little bit later on how it all works. For now, let's talk about the other memberships. The second tier is where the subscription portion comes into play for a monthly or biannual charge, and it's called priority tier, and it includes the following. You get a monthly charge of $9.99, or you can pay a six month for $49.99, but doing it biannually saves you about $1.33 a month. You get access to a premium rig with RTX on, or the equivalent of around a 3060 GPU. So you get 1080p at 60 FPS during your gaming session. This is very similar to the experience you get on 
xCloud or Xbox Game Pass streaming. The other thing you get is priority access to premium servers, which means you don't really have to wait in a queue like the free membership tier would. And you get six hour session links. Once time is up, you can simply just rejoin and play again. And you also get Crisis Remastered for free. This brings us to the final tier. And this is the tier that actually got me interested in checking out this device in the first place. It's called the RTX 3080 membership, and it includes the following. You get a build biannual six months at $9.99, which is the equivalent to about $16.67 a month. Access to an RTX 3080 rig with RTX on, so yes, you're playing on NVIDIA's exclusive RTX 3080 servers on a virtual RTX 3080. You get an eight hour session link, and again, once your time is up, you can simply rejoin. Now the whole purpose of this is to rotate NVIDIA servers and keep traffic going smoothly on them. Now one thing worth mentioning is that you don't actually need a Shield TV to use this service. You can use this if you have a PC or Mac. Now if you do, you're limited to 1440p at 120 FPS, versus if you do have a Shield TV, then you can have 4K HDR, and we have confirmed on our 4K TV that it indeed did work when a game was loaded and it automatically turned to 4K HDR settings. Oh, and also you get Crisis Remastered for free. Okay, so now that we've covered the three different tiers of GeForce Now membership, let me explain how the whole thing works. For all the games on GeForce Now, there are around a thousand of them. Now you must own each game on the supported platform. That's the difference between this and like say for instance, Xbox Game Pass. The three platforms that are supported are Steam, Epic Games, and Origin. It's simple to connect each platform to your GeForce Now account as it makes you sign in when you open the game. After you've done that, then you're good to go. Some top titles we basically played were Far Cry 6, Fortnite, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Cyberpunk, and of course Control. And trust me, there are plenty more. But Roby, I have PC Game Pass, and I essentially get access to 100 games that I can play whenever and whatever I want. And that's where you have to give a nod to Xbox Game Pass or PC Game Pass or xCloud, whichever you want to call it, which you don't necessarily have to buy the game, but you have access to stream it, but at the most, 1080p. However, if you do have a PC and you have Xbox Game Pass, then you can play the game at whatever resolution your PC supports. But if you don't have a powerful PC, no matter what, with Xbox Game Pass or xCloud, the most you can get is limited to 1080p. And that's something worth noting, and that's a differentiator between both the uh, GeForce Now subscription and Xbox Game Pass. So what the heck is the GeForce Now membership for then? It wasn't meant to be a streaming platform like a Game Pass, where games come and go and you pay a $10 monthly fee to play them. The GeForce Now membership was created to give you access to NVIDIA servers with RTX 3080s to be able to play those games how they were intended to be played, at maximum resolution. That's with high graphics quality, RTX on and high frames per second. And that's something you can do exclusively with the RTX 3080 membership mentioned above. You asked the question, of course, earlier, what happens to your game progression as you play? Well, by connecting your accounts such as Steam, Epic, and Origin, all progression is then saved via Cloud Sync. Now you must have Cloud Sync turned on for those platforms though, for it to work so your games basically work everywhere. But if you don't, then Nvidia will save your progression for up to five years for the Shield. But it won't translate to say your Steam account or your PC if you play on there or anywhere else if you don't have Cloud Sync activated. Now our gameplay was smooth. And here's the one thing I'm gonna recommend if you're gonna look at something like a Shield TV Pro. You definitely need to, one, have a very high speed broadband connection. We're talking 25 megabits per second or faster. It, it preferably faster. And you're definitely gonna wanna use things like a wired connection. Obviously streaming can be finicky. We didn't have any issues, but you could have things like where you could lose connections or you may need to reload the game and potentially wait in the queue to play. Obviously those things become far less of an issue if you're using a wired connection versus doing something like, wait, say for instance, with wireless. Now getting back to the actual experience, because I promise we would, we tested out a few different games. Now we experienced butter smooth gameplay throughout and the graphics looked incredible at 4K HDR. Again, the virtual RTX 3080 membership was totally worth it on the games we played. I mean, it was borderline magical. And to be honest, if you would have asked me if I was playing on like, say for instance, a streaming device, I don't think I could have really told you versus playing on something like a local PC. Trust me, we played the gamut and we came back totally impressed. Now, here's the deal. Do I actually recommend this for everyone? Let's just do the math because this is, this is really where it kind of breaks down. Let's say for instance, you bought an Nvidia Shield and 30 games at full price. That's like years worth of games for some people, which no one does anymore, by the way. Let's just kind of play along and pretend we paid 60 bucks. You could use that service and have access to 3080s and assuming they're gonna to continue to upgrade 4080s or whatever for 117 months for the cost of a similar PC that's outdated a year or two later. Even when purchasing games, there's still a tremendous amount of value here. 
Though, of course, there are always caveats. You need fast internet, and this is definitely not gonna be for folks who wanna play competitive shooters at like AAA level. But for those amazing AAA experience single player games like God of War or Cyberpunk, this could be a truly different approach to getting the best gaming experience, and it's better looking than xCloud or any other similar services. The caveat is, is that you have to buy the game on like Steam, Epic Games, or Origin first, then sync everything. But if that's good enough for you and you wanna play with the graphics cranked and RTX on accessing a virtual 3080, then this is a must buy. And the membership is a must buy as well. So cheap, but worth it, the Nvidia Shield. It is potentially a cheap alternative to buying a $3,000 plus PC. And something that I don't think many of you have considered. But it's not about what I think, it's about what you think. Do you have an Nvidia Shield TV Pro? Are you looking to get one? What do you think of the value? Is, do you think this is actually worth it? Did I do a good job explaining it? I'd love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video or we go live right here on Robitech. Do you have questions about the NVIDIA Shield or any other tech-related questions? Then check out our amazing Discord server, filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on those very subjects. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robytechdeals.com or at robytechdeals on Twitter, where we have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech, gaming, PC components, or TVs. Finally, you can also follow me or my team and all the socials at Robitech everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the very next one.